for about a 12 month layoff. Um, but we're also selling entertainment and, and we're selling, you know, two guys that to love to get at it and, and, and they love to punch and love to brawl. Um, they're action packed. And, and that's what this fight is all about. It's going to just be great entertainment. So if you're out here on the West Coast, uh, again, you want to be entertained, this is a fight you got to buy. To change the topic a little bit, do you have any thoughts on Andre Ward? Do you have anything going forward about Andre Ward as far as retirement? Or? No, you know what? It's quiet right now. We, we had said after the fight that Andre was going to enjoy the holidays with his family. Um, he had a great holiday. And after the holidays, we would all get together and discuss what the next steps are. Um, we'll, we'll probably begin that process shortly, but there's nothing to report. Michael, how, how valid is the rematch clause that was mentioned? Um, how valid is the rematch clause? At the end of the day, Andre Ward will ultimately do what he wants to do. Um, and, and it's entirely up to Andre as to whether or not he wants to do a rematch or not do a rematch. Um, you know, so, so that's, you know, that's all I can say. Are you surprised with his retirement talks? I mean, he seems like very... No, I just think, I think, listen, I, I think Andre is just very content with where he is in life and he's content with um, what he's achieved in boxing. You know, he, he's been in the sport for a long time. Um, you know, Andre's got a lot of interests. He, he's an extraordinarily bright, articulate individual. He's very committed to his family. He's very committed to his community. Uh, obviously, boxing has been very, very important to his life. It's been the centerpiece of his life for many, many years. But it's not the only thing in his life. And and so uh, the reflect the fact that that he's gone through this reflection period in terms of where he is is not surprising. We all do it, right? It's it's very natural for all of us to do it. Miguel Cotto, you know, over the last year has gone through that reflection period. Hey, you know, what have I accomplished during my career? What do I want to do for the rest of my career? You heard him t today, you know, talk about family and, and children, and you, t you heard him talk about his legacy. And his legacy, you know, is is about you know his family and what his family thinks of him. So I, I think it's healthy for professional athletes to take a step away from their sport and reflect on what they've accomplished and where they want to go during the next chapter of their of their of their life. I mean, th these are individuals that have dedicated themselves for so many years to the sport that they're involved in. They have the right to decide whether they want to continue or whether they want to step away and do something else. Does Michael go through with the retirement? What does that mean for Rock Nation? He's a, he's a big star. We, we, we haven't thought about that. You know, again, we, we haven't had those conversations. Um, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge if we get there. Looking back on the uh, last fight, uh, did you see a dramatic rise or fall in his stock considering what the uh, pay-per-view numbers were? Not, not at all. I mean, listen, you know, pay-per-view is what it is today. Um, the, the whole pay-per-view landscape has changed. I mean, since the Cotto Canelo fight that did, you know, 900,000 plus homes, you haven't seen big numbers. And as I said in New York, we all, the media, people involved in boxing, you know, have to kind of do a reset. And I don't think you're going to see huge pay-per-view numbers in the future. I just don't think that, you know, that's reality. Do you think it takes something circus-like, like a uh, Mayweather versus Conor McGregor? You know, I, I can't comment to that. You know, all I can comment to is that the pay-per-view world and universe and industry has changed. And so we have to adapt to that and we have to reset our expectations. And, um, you know, the, the Andre Ward, you know, Kovalov numbers were what they were. Um, if they get into the ring again, I'm sure the numbers will be, you know, better. Listen, you know, I think people, you know, in, anticipate, you know, a great battle again. Um, but we'll see if we get there. Uh, Michael, Michael that, I got a question. One last question, guys. Yeah. I got to catch a plane. Okay, that First of all, I want to say congratulations. You got ten cam. You got ten cameras around you now. I remember <laughs> Cotto Canelo. Now I would ask you on the replay when you watched Cotto uh, left Ward, were you taken back by maybe Jim Lampley's comments about? punches that didn't land and it seemed like he came off slightly I know you work with Ace Field now I don't want to create a landmine but I'm just it, it bothered me that it was the, the telecast was slightly slanted and it kind of moved me in a certain way. You know, listen, I, I can't get caught up in that. Know. You know, and, and at, at the end of the day, you know, Andre Ward walked out of that ring with three belts. And three judges um, in Las Vegas uh, saw the fight uh, in Andre's favor. And and, and we saw the fight in Andre's favor. And, you know, as I always preach, it's not the way you start the game, it's how you finish. And Andre finished with a bang, and he earned that victory. Guys, I gotta head to a flight. I gotta go see.